Ya, salam kenal Pak Firman, Ibu Sari dan Ibu Sofi ya. Terima kasih Bu Nina. Salam kenal Ibu. Ya. I hope one day you can visit our uh, our campus. Ibu Sari have already here. When is it? I uh, actually I think four of but yeah, Bu Sofi oh, and Pak Firman. Oh, we did. Yeah. So, a very yeah. short visit yeah. at the time. Bu Sofi have already been here. When is it, Ibu Sofi? We visited around campus. Bu Tati showed us. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, it okay. was the three of us, uh, the four of us. Oh, okay, like good, good. Yeah, last year. Yeah, actually, the, the mosque, the grand mosque, and they were yeah. so impressed the mosque. Okay, wonderful. It was last year, yeah. It was last year. Hmm. Uh, Ibu Tati, it will be up to you whether you need to wait yeah. for another okay. three or five minutes or you would like to start now. It's up to you. I think I'm going to take advantage of the time. <laughs> so we need oh, to yes. okay. yeah, on time. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, people sure they will be joining you anytime. But Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi uh, wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, while waiting for uh, more people would come, I believe there will be more people to come because I believe the flyers been circulated widely, so I would expect more people to come in. Uh, uh, my name is Tati Wardi. I'm here to be a moderator and also presenter. So this uh, this opportunity, I would like to thank everyone who's coming here and the dean who's given us the opportunity to share uh, our research, actually preliminary research. Uh, so um, uh, today's presentation is quite uh, it's quite interesting and quite uh, nerve wracking for us because we are still uh, kind of uh, uh, making sense of our data and then a lot of new information still coming and then not 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 to mention the the. Uh, the conclusion of the research will be next month. So there will be more dynamic uh, findings perhaps, but uh, for doing this, we have for the purpose of preparing this presentation is already, uh, we are, I think we are grateful. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to come up with some ideas that we are presenting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, that worked. Um, so um, before I'm introducing our um, uh, co-presenters here, we have uh, four of us, uh, um, but uh, there will be uh, Dr. Firman Palindungan is from, uh, he's a colleague, he's working at the Universitas Tengku Umar, and then we have uh, Dr. Sofi Dewayani from the Tara Foundation, also working at the Ministry of Education, and Dr. Sari Silviani from the University of uh, Sriwijaya. Uh, so um, before we are presenting, uh, we would like to hear perhaps some uh, uh, five minutes uh, pre-introduction that uh, the dean typically would do before the lunch talk. So the time will be for yours. Thank you very much, Ibu Dr. Tati Wardi. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, I would like to thank Dr. Tati Wardi, the moderator, and one of the, at the same time, is one of the presenter of this uh, morning lunch talk, yeah, together with uh, research partners, Dr. Fir, uh, Dr. Tati has already mentioned, uh, uh, her research partners are Dr. Firman Parlindungan from Universitas Nesku Umar, Dr. Sari Silviani from Universitas Sriwijaya, and Dr. Uh, Sophie Dewayani from Lita Foundation, who will share uh, the knowledge on uh, promoting multicultural awareness through children's uh, literature in Indonesian literacy classrooms. I would like also to acknowledge uh, the uh, presence of uh, our students, uh, yeah, and also uh, the participants oh, from. Her voice is kind of breaking up. Oh, have... okay, okay. Okay, please wait. I'll uh, connect to, uh, via my handphone if uh, my voice is uh, leaking. Yeah, uh, sometimes it happens uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and while I'm connecting, uh, also, yeah, I can see that the uh, participants for this uh, uh, lunch, uh, sorry, lunch talk is it is it is in the morning, <laughs> and it is uh -huh. like, usually we have it in the afternoon, but. 
due to the many schedules of the students, we only can uh, have uh, the, the session uh, on uh, Thursday morning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm still waiting for uh, the host to. Okay. So let me come in in order I can talk from my handphone in order my voice is clear. Yeah. Okay. okay. I would like to lower down the very sorry for this technical issue. Yeah, I don't see my the other lectures from Faculty of Education yet. Uh, I see Dr. But, Destina. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Destina is here. Yeah, Dr. China is become the speaker uh, in one of the seminars. She might join later and. Dr. Uh, Lukmanul Hakim also, I met uh, him in the morning. He told me that uh, he would like uh, to go to Brin, so he might, he is not able to uh, join our session uh, today. Yeah? So this is actually the nine lunch talk being held by the Faculty mm -hmm. of uh, Education, yeah? which we started uh, from February 2022. Yeah? And as usual, I would like to acknowledge our previous speakers in the lunch talk this year. And before that, I don't know whether our uh, scholars in residence, uh, Professor Asgab and Dr. Mm -hmm. Umi might be here. Uh, we have already let them know about uh, this event because uh, in November and December, there will be the speakers for our lunch talk, yeah. So previously uh, in the first, uh, uh, lunch talk, we have three lectures at the Faculty of Education uh, who deliver their speech. Uh, uh, first, like, uh, okay, someone uh, is mute. Uh, okay, thank you. So I would like to mention the speakers from our earlier lunch talks uh, in February. Dr. Lukmanul Hakim spoke about group decision. And then in March, Dr. Charina Ayuris Kianti discuss about empathy. Uh, yeah. Actually, we expect <laughs> her to be the professor on empathy. <laughs> and I hope uh, her dream uh, to uh, establish the wellness center at Triple IU can come uh, to very soon. And we have in April, we have Dr. Destina, who already here, spoke about developing Indonesian students' special ability to support mathematical, mathematic learning. Yeah, And uh, it, tomorrow, uh, she, inv she invite uh, her super pre preview super pre supervisor uh, when she did her PhD, Dr. Siti Patahudin, uh, to, to speak in her class. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, our students, both uh, MA semester one or semester three, uh, or any PhD student who'd like to join the class, please uh, welcome, yeah, uh, to join the Ibu Destinas class with special guest speaker, uh, Dr. Siti Patahudin. And in my, we had uh, the lecture, I, uh, I mean, uh, the guest lecture, uh, Dr. Cynthia Refina, uh, uh, she was from Semeru, Semeru Research Institute, uh, who delivered her lecture about teacher policies and teacher quality in Indonesia. And in June, we also have guest speaker, Dr. Abdul Rahman, uh, who spoke about the issues and challenges in teacher professional development. In July, we listened to Dr. Bambang Sumintono's speech. Yeah, that's one of our lectures in the Faculty of Education. And her presentation was uh, on the Indonesian experience of educational uh, decentralization. Yeah, uh, and then uh, the next month is uh, doc, uh, in September. Uh, sorry, uh, July, August. Yeah, August. We had Dr. Alpa uh, Amir Rahman, uh, who has spoken about distance education. Yeah. Uh, distant education is not necessarily online education, yeah, and it's challenges and opportunities. And uh, last month in September, we had Dr. Saida Ulfa from Universitas Negeri Malang who presented about the potential of uh, massive open online uh, courses uh, to disrupt higher education. And today, uh, in our October lunch talk, uh, we will uh, listen about. Uh, promoting multicultural awareness through children literacy, literature in Indonesian literary, uh, literacy classroom. Yeah? 
and we have four speakers. Uh, it's very special today. And uh, in regarding the term of uh, about literacy, actually, I love reading uh, from my young age since my uh, primary school. I am lucky to be brought in the family, uh, educated family who provided me with the books, magazines uh, to read, which uh, also, I sometimes uh, being asked to read load, load, yeah, for him during my father during uh, resting time, and I think it's, uh, as you might uh, uh, listen later uh, by the presenters that uh, uh, fluency in reading doesn't necessarily uh, guarantee comprehension, like what I did when I was in primary school when I was reading a load for. My father, it doesn't necessarily mean that I comprehend what I read fluently, yeah. And uh, I was lucky also that since my young age, in uh, grade uh, five, I think, and six, I was in charge of my school library. Uh, so I can that facilitated me uh, to read as many books as uh, I want easily, yeah. And through reading, we gain many things. Yeah, it is entertaining. Yeah, and educating, enlightening, depending on what books that we, we read, yeah. And I have, uh, I can feel the positive effect of uh, reading, a lot of reading, like adding more vocabulary, and uh, that kind of knowledge we have read can be retrieved uh, in the context where we need uh, that, uh, that knowledge, yeah. And we are lucky that as Muslim, uh, we in fact uh, know that uh, the first Quranic verses reveals uh, is the instruction to read. Yeah, uh, So that's the verses. Yeah, that's the very important verse that uh, we need to do. Uh, yeah, to improve uh, our literacy. Yeah. And it is through daily reading in the literature, yeah, we can improve our literacy. And today, Dr. Tati and her colleagues uh, will explain uh, the use of children literature to promote multicultural awareness, important awareness for us who live within the multicultural society of Indonesia. And I hope you will all have fruitful discussion today. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, the dean, and thank you for sharing your childhood growing up, uh, being uh, growing up as a literate person, you know, in a, a quite rich uh, uh, literacy environment. Yeah, that's what we call. Um, okay, uh, I think we're gonna start uh, presenting our uh, slide that we have prepared with us here. Uh, I'm going to repeat again the presenters here, Dr. Sophie Dewayani, Dr. Firman Patimunga, and Dr. Sari Silviani, and with me. We are going to take in turn in presenting the slides and also uh, followed by the q and We try our best just to present what is necessary so that we can have more discussion because uh, this uh, the, why we are motivated to share this thing because we would like to get some input, perhaps some of some of your reading from our research. So there will be uh, one of the goals of our presentation today. Okay, I'm gonna share the presentation slides. Um, okay, everyone can see the slide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everyone can see. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, here is uh, the topic that we have prepared that is promoting multicultural awareness through children's literature in Indonesian literacy classroom. My name is Tatiwadi. I'm from uh, Triple IU. Um, this is the uh, to give you background about our research. This is the research that we are lucky enough to get a grant from the university at Triple IU that we received the collab collaborative research grant. So it allows us to do some collaborative research between university, uh, or in this case, uh, Triple IU, uh, University, University of Tengku Umar, Ritara Foundation, and uh, Sriwijaya University. So we're very grateful uh, with the grant. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna start uh, presenting the slide. Um, 
Okay, uh, let me start off by um, sharing about the context of literacy education in Indonesia. Um, uh, I believe the majority of you here are already familiar with the uh, national exam replacement called AKM. That is a minimum competency assessment or assessment competency minimum that applies to uh, school children. Yeah? And from the first result of uh, AKM uh, assessment, uh, the Ministry of Education already published the result that one of which include this quite disheartening finding that elementary school, almost 20% of them need special intervention on the literacy competencies, meaning that one out of two students in elementary schools have not reached the minimum literacy competencies. So uh, that's one of the findings that's quite disheartening and we're looking forward to seeing the second, perhaps the second result probably sometime this year. Here. So um, also what is happening right now in terms of the policy that we have, you might be aware the fact that we have a new curriculum called independent curriculum or curriculum Merdeka. Uh, in, the, in the context of independent curriculum or curriculum Merdeka, children's literature is highly recommended in the independent curriculum for it facilitates to improve students' thinking skills that are relevant to the measurement of literacy skill in the AKM or assessment competency minimum. Also, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Indonesian uh, slogan, that's Binika Tunggal Ika or Unity in Diversity. Uh, oh. Unfortunately, in Indonesian classroom, it is rarely it is rarely authentically promoted in class beyond lecturing and preaching. Uh, so choosing children's literature so that it can be a window and a mirror to see diversity has become a necessity in the classroom. That's we are uh, uh, the, the goal of our, present, uh, our, our research. Let me also state some of the prevailing literacy misconception in Indonesian classroom. The first one, in the past, literacy or even currently, literacy is still equated to 15 minutes reading before class. Uh, I'm sure some of you are probably nodding your head because this is something that still applies in uh, many classrooms in Indonesia. Uh, so it is one of the misconceptions that needs to be, yeah, need to be treated or need to, to be uh, straightened out. And then there's some also misleading referencing of six foundational literacy that is uh, borrowed from World Economic Forum uh, as a reference for literacy learning, which is uh, quite misleading. So, but it still applies in many classrooms and still, still many teachers uh, that uh, use this kind of reference uh, as an anchor for their uh, uh, literacy uh, teaching and learning practices. And the last one, how literacy learning is, uh, as a researcher, we are concerned with because literacy learning is facilitated, how uh, literacy learning is facilitated facilitated in Indonesian literacy classroom is not clear yet. So those are some of the literacy misconceptions that still apply in Indonesian classroom. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Firman Parlindungan. Thank you, Bu Tati. So hi everyone, uh, I hope now you are having a kind of uh, background knowledge yeah, or a conception about what is literacy and what is happening in Indonesia regarding the literacy uh, skills or competence in elementary school especially. And now I'm going to uh, explain what our research uh, is about and then uh, uh, concerning literacy learning in general and also the context of the research later on will be explained by uh, Busari. Uh, next, please. So, Continuing uh, the discussion about misconception, uh, like uh, what Dr. Tati has explained, uh, I think uh, uh, another misconception that is happening here in Indonesia is that uh, reading uh, commonly treated is as, uh, as a natural process or a natural skills, meaning that uh, people conce uh, conceptions about reading uh, is just to give a, a book to uh, to children so that they will be able to to read. Uh, the the truth is uh, what research has uh, demonstrated. Uh, reading is not a natural process. So meaning uh, you are not born uh, to read the book uh, easily. You need uh, it's a complex process 
you need an explicit instruction, whether at home or at school. And then you need some strategies uh, to be able to master reading. So students do not learn reading just because they are in a reading environment. So what Putati has said earlier about literacy, uh, Gerakan Literacy National, or the 15 minutes of reading, what, what, what most happening in the class is that uh, the school provide the corner of books in the class or at school uh, by hoping that the students will have the, this uh, competence uh, or, of reading. So reading requires longer learning and practice time uh, inside of the classroom, outside of the classroom or at home. And then various strategies and language sources need to be mastered and by giving them uh, explicit and direct uh, instruction. Next, please. So this is what Skarborov in 2001 uh, uh, said about how to solidify the competence of reading. The reading is not just to read, you need explicit instruction. So it's like a reading rope. Many strands are woven into one skilled reading from language comprehensions, from word rec recognitions. You need to master phonological awareness, decoding, sight recognitions, and then vocabulary, language structures, verbal reasoning. All of those skills are, uh, are need, need to be uh, trained explicitly in the classroom. And teachers need to... Uh, uh, identify and observe do, how the skills are developed over time uh, and, uh, and, uh, and observe the change uh, over time in the classroom of the, in, uh, in the student's uh, ability. And then if we have this close observation and close examinations of these skills, then we will produce uh, a skilled reading in the students. So this is a reading rope or strengths that are woven into a uh, skill reading that we have to understand. That reading is not just you give a book to students to read. You need a specific plan. You need specific a target uh, that you have to uh, make in your classroom. Next, please. And another misconception is that uh, students who are fluent in reading might not always understand what they are reading. So uh, if you are looking at some students uh, who are very fluent in their reading, we need still, still, yeah, we need to check their comprehensions because students can be fluent in reading but not always understand the reading. And uh, we know that there are two, at least two level of uh, reading comprehensions, literal and higher level. And for that, we need, uh, again, yeah, a direct and explicit instructions uh, of strategies to understand text based on the purpose of reading. So comprehensions is another level or the top, uh, the priority in reading. And it's the hardest. And it's a, it's a lifelong problem, uh, even for us as adult, also still having uh, comprehension problems in reading. Next, please. Uh, therefore, we need a very multicultural books uh, uh, to provide in our classrooms. What often happens in, in the class or in Indonesia, uh, in generally, uh, we have books at school, uh, a library are full with books, but those books might not uh, appropriate for reading program. So we need various books uh, that uh, consider the interest of the students, that consider the difficulty level, uh, it's, it's, it's target the right level of the student's reading ability. And also we give students choice to select what books they, they like, what, uh, what genre of the books that they would like to have in their reading program. So these three criteria need to be uh, uh, an attention yeah, for everyone in Indonesia, especially the school's principals, uh, the teachers that uh, it, it is good that you have more books at school, but uh, you need to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, evaluate whether those books are at the interest of the students at the right level of difficulty and the choice that you give the students at, at the, right, uh, the right one. 
So uh, next one, please. I think uh, that is uh, the misconceptions or what is happening in Indonesia. And in this research that we are doing with Dr. Tati, uh, we use this framework uh, called culturally relevant pedagogy, a framework of pedagogy that puts students' experiences at the front and center of education to facilitate the learning. So talking about uh, language development, talking about uh, uh, reading ability, it's close examinations of culture. It's uh, entangled, yeah? So culture and language are closely related. So when we are facilitating uh, students uh, reading, then we need to uh, also facilitate or mediate the culture of the students. So the existence of multicultural children's literature here is very important because it is uh, as a medium for teaching multicultural values. Uh, so books whose stories uh, promote values and cultures, they are not mainstream. Uh, what culture information, what, uh, whose culture is being promoted in the classroom mirror for language learning. So multicultural books also serve as mirrors and windows meaning that when you are reading uh, books as mirrors, you reflect your own cultural uh, values or information in those books. But when you have books as a windows, meaning that you are viewing other people cultures uh, in, this, in the books. So that's books as uh, mirrors and windows. And also multicultural children's literature as a medium for teaching literacy skills. As I said earlier, that uh, literacy, language learning are closely related with culture. Uh, what culture information that you teach, uh, whose culture you are being uh, promoted in the, in the classrooms matter. So we don't want any students to feel excluded in the classrooms that you, you only talk about the mainstream culture or the dominant culture, while the minority culture is excluded from the classroom. And those students will feel, uh, will feel uh, excluded and then uh, being, uh, what is it, a minority in the classrooms. They will be, they will have this double burdens of the teaching. So we need also to develop vocabulary building through this, this multicultural uh, children's literature and then characters. And of, of course, uh, the highest uh, skills is comprehensions. I think uh, that's the research framework and also some backgrounds of the study. And Bu Dr. Sari will explain the context of the, uh, the study further. Bu Sari, time is yours. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Good morning. Okay, let's see. Okay, now um, we're going to uh, inform you about uh, the teachers who are involved in our study. And um, this is a, um, a study that involved three teachers. So um, the first one is uh, teacher, Dian, uh, teacher DN or teacher D in here, we can say. Um, she teaches at Islamic private elementary school in Samarinda. And then the second one, uh, Pa R, um, a teacher at public uh, elementary school in Surabaya is Java. And then the third uh, teacher uh, participant is uh, Pak D, a public elementary school teacher at Malina, West Kalimantan. So if you see um, the teachers here, you can imagine that we uh, focus on three different classrooms. We, purpose, uh, we purposely um, chose these uh, contexts to, um, to kind of see how uh, multicultural children's literature is used in different contexts. Um, so um, these teachers uh, actually um, have worked with us in different contexts. So maybe this is something that we need to uh, share with you that uh, we all, the, the, the researchers in, in, in this group, um, that is Dr. Tati, uh, Dr. Firman Palindungan, Dr. Uh, Sophie Dewaini and I, work um, with the Ministry of Education in, in, in training teachers to uh, implement innovative uh, teaching um, 
methods and uh, with the principle of uh, reading and writing workshop. So it was back in uh, 2021. So these teachers are part of the first cohort who received these training uh, in collaboration between uh, uh, the Teachers College reading and writing programs in Columbia University, United States, uh, supported by Indonesian uh, literacy experts um, in which we, we also uh, participating in this uh, program. Um, and after the program, we uh, got in touch with them to know how they uh, implemented the, uh, the new ways of teaching reading in their own classroom. So when we had the chance to um, apply for the research grant, uh, we, we, we came to the decision that we would like to um, invite these teachers to, um, to use uh, multicultural children literature because they already applied the, um, principles, the principle of teaching reading through dialogue. So uh, we consider that as a fitting uh, requirements for this. And, and of course also these teachers serve different backgrounds. So we will be uh, able to see uh, how these uh, books were implemented in different contexts with different types of uh, students. Um, and, you know, they're not just diverse in terms of reading ability, but also the uh, cultural background and also religious background. Um, and those are the uh, contexts that will help us to see um, what happened in the classroom, what, what dialogue happens in the classroom when we, um, when we have these uh, books as, as, a, as an important part of their uh, literacy learning. Um, the research duration was, well, actually uh, the preparation started from July and uh, we had um, focus group discussion with the teachers to kind of have their uh, opinion about what teaching reading meant to them and uh, to know more about the background of the uh, classrooms, uh, even though we have the information from our uh, previous uh, interaction with them, but we have this focus group discussion to um, explore more about their contacts. And in, uh, in August, uh, this, the, the teachers have started to implement um, uh, the, uh, the principle of teaching uh, multicultural children's literature. Um, we also um, did interview, um, so in focus group discussion, we uh, talk with all teachers uh, as a group, and then we follow up with the uh, interview with uh, individual teachers. And so far we have done two interviews um, before they uh, implemented the children's literature in the classroom and uh, right now after they have uh, used some books in their classroom. And uh, we also ask teachers to document their teaching so that we can have more uh, understanding of the interaction that happened. So that's through the video recording. And we also visited the schools. So researcher here, uh, we, uh, we just take turn visiting their classroom to get a more um, to get to know more about the context and to to see um, how the uh, how the dialogue happened in the classroom, and we also had uh, the chance to talk with the with some of the children in the classroom, um, so so we can ask them directly. Uh, in addition to the uh, survey that we give students and and the literacy tests given to students before. Um, before the implementation of the program. Um, based on the students' baseline data, this is the comprehension questionnaires that we uh, administered at the beginning of the program. We can say, we can say that uh, students have uh, low scores in making inference. So this is uh, not surprising and very common to see in Indonesian context that um, the hardest uh, the hardest uh, skill or the hardest uh, type of questions that student found was usually inference because they have to um, to know um, they have to use higher order uh, thinking skills in order to 
uh, answer these types of questions. So these are a bit about the context of uh, our study. Uh, and next we are going to share initial uh, findings from our classroom. Um, Dr. Sophie, are you ready to share the next slides? Yes, Dr. Zari. Okay, go ahead, Mbak Sophie. Yes, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. So I'd like to go ahead by presenting the temporary findings. Uh, so these are still temporary, but we learned a lot of things from this study. And this confirms our beliefs that um, literacy learning should be widely promoted. Uh, because we studied the misconception of literacy as a stated awareness of um, literacy programs. Um, for example, the, um, the 15 minutes of reading before the lesson starts and also uh, the uh, teacher's approaches to increase, for example, students' um, AKM literacy score, but what students do is still far from the ideal um, literacy learning as the process of mediating students' thinking skills. Because for example, in AKM, you measure uh, how students are able to assess the information and how they are able to interpret and integrate the information and how they are able to evaluate and reflect the information. But what teachers do um, oftentimes is, okay, saying kids, now we are going to reflect and evaluate this uh, reading. That's not, that's not the actual literacy learning because the learning um, locates, is located on how teachers uh, model the thinking process and, mediate, um, and mediating students' uh, thinking skills. So, um, and also um, it's located on how teachers select um, books that are um, proper and according to the um, learning goals that they want to achieve. So this is um, shown by how um, Mrs. D and uh, Bu Budi yeah, in, in Samarinda, she, she actually presents today, but uh, for the sake of the confidentiality of the region, we can, we can, we can show her full name but this is a very good example from her. And also um, um, in our interview, uh, Mrs. D um, points at the issue of gender relation that is prevailing in her classroom. And this is the reason why she chose the Manbaru Epi. The Manbaru Epi is actually a story of how minority immigrant um, girl from Afghan trying to cope with her um, sadness of missing her uh, beloved family members when she came to Indonesia and she interacted with a local Sundanese girl in one of city in West Java. So this book showed how uh, the differences um, of the two girls and how they come up with um, uh, the similarity um, among uh, each other and they became friends. So this uh, looks simple, but it shows a lot of aspects of um, diversity. And the second one is Tugas Penting Kartika or Kartika's important mission and showing how a student, uh, a girl who is boyish, um, this is also an, an interesting issue like came up um, often in children's conversation and how she has to attend a uh, a wedding party and she's assigned with uh, an important mission which is wearing a feminine attire, cultural attire that is uh, not uh, very much um, um, fit with her. And she came up with a solution. And also uh, a heroine from uh, Sumatra, Ratna Komala and Biji Rumbia Ajaib uh, showing a, a heroine who helped her brother. This is um, deliberatively chosen by uh, Mrs. Dia, considering um, the issue of gender relationship in her classroom. And interestingly also, Mr. Uh, D from Malinau. Malinau is located in a, 
uh, outskirt of um, North Kalimantan. Yeah, it, this is close to the border of Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, he also deliberately chose a story of uh, Ketika Dama Melaut is a story of a uh, um, uh, young uh, fisherman um, boy who uh, has to juggle between his uh, fishing uh, duty with his parents and also schooling. Uh, Jangan Sedi Bujang uh, relates with uh, his condition because uh, this uh, minority um, boy um, likes labi-labi uh, or uh, tenggiling, yeah, uh, because he lives in the jungle. And and a lot of um, students of Mr. D also like uh, the food too, uh, exotic food, because they also relate with their um, life in the uh, in the uh, farm, yeah, uh, which is uh, close to the jungle. Jenna is a story of a young boy of uh, Dayak of Kenya. Uh, this is the minority uh, ethnic uh, group in North Kalimantan and how he's coping with um, the death of uh, his uh, uh, grand grandpa uh, while also doing uh, an ethical um, uh, um, what is it uh, procession to to commemorate the death. Uh, Mr. Uh, are from Surabaya, uh, who is uh, dealing with the issue of bullying, of physical uh, bullying, and also the issue of inclusiveness. Uh, Dari Baladifli chose Aku Suka Caramu, the story of uh, two uh, children interacting with one another, in which one of them is uh, blind. Yeah. And then Suwida Loro is a physical uh, feature, uh, which is uh, also a prevailing issue in his classroom. And Chap Gome is about uh, the interaction of two girls um, of Chinese, Indonesian, and the local Japanese uh, Muslim uh, in um, conferring about uh, how they celebrate their religious um, uh, a celebration, yeah, um, Imlek or Chinese New Year and the Eid celebration. Because uh, uh, pa, our classrooms, um, uh, majority uh, is Muslim, the, the students are dominated by Muslim, but they have this um, few of the non Muslim um, kids. So uh, we, we will go ahead by revealing what we found from the studies. Okay. So as we are uh, dealing with the AKM issues and how uh, teachers are starting to uh, improve a student's ability to assessing information, interpret, integrate, and evaluating the information from the text with their life. Mr. R, for example, um, did this in a, in, in, in a very uh, lively talk and and um, he actually conducted uh, the, uh, one of the learning method called reading workshop in which he used um, the books in uh, specific approaches, uh, stages in the way uh, that um, he started with, uh, he modeled how he thinks about the content of the book. And then he stated the specific uh, teaching point or a learning goal or tujuan pembelajaran yeah, that, that he wanted his students to, to achieve. And then he gave the students opportunity to, to do or to implement the, the specific uh, strategy to, to, uh, in, in achieving the, the, the reading goals. And then uh, he also did the conferring in which he uh, helped specific students with uh, specific um, learning uh, uh, guidance. And then he asked a few students to present how they, uh, how they conducted or how they implement the, 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 the strategy, the reading strategy. And we can see here, um, the uh, one thing that we are amazed with the findings is that uh, the students are slowly 
uh, started to realize or started to shift their perspective towards inclusivity. For example, when previously they uh, take um, they taken like um, oh for example oh you fat or you're um, you're you're different. It's just a funny thing. But now they realize that it's a body shaming or bullying. They they started to familiar themselves with the word bullying, which is interesting because it is it is such a discursive or loaded words. Yeah, bullying is is a term used by adults mostly, but kids, when they used the word bullying, uh, they, they, they're, really, they're really aware that, that it's something that they're not supposed to do. So um, in uh, reading the, the stories with that Loro, for example, uh, in which at the, uh, here there's a, a scene where Suida Loro has a unique physical feature and and she's kind of insecure in interacting with her friends. Um, but, but, our, but our students also reflect on that. And then um, when they came across students who are different or, or a friend who have a specific ability, uh, they started to treat him uh, very well. For example, like uh, they start to include her, to include him in, in the learning process, in the interaction with uh, with with other friends, so so it's 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 a kind of progress that uh, Paar has noted, yeah. After using uh, this um, cultural sensitive books, and also this is this shows how they are able to connect themselves with text or with the world and the world around them. So this is how they are able to reflect on and to evaluate the text. So. It's 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 mediated. It's modeled by the teacher. So it's not it's not just teacher saying, "Kids, let's reflect on and evaluate the text." It's not that, but it's it's a process. Okay. And next, also interesting in Mrs. D's classroom, uh, when Mrs. D showed uh, the book um, "Tugas Penting Kartika" in showing uh, a girl with a uh, masculine. Um, uh, uh, a feature and masculine um, attitude. Yeah, a personality. Uh, the uh, the kids came across the word tomboy. The word tomboy is a kind of a taboo, or it's not usually used in the classroom because it's 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 something that is um, a negative in uh, Islamic uh, sense. Yeah, because um, Mrs. D classroom is. Um, is um, all um, her, her students are all Muslims and uh, she te she's teaching in uh, one Islamic school, yeah, a private school. So uh, using words that are that are not approved by Islamic law is, is is important. And many words are loaded. For example, like tomboy, that girls are not allowed to do this and that. But but this a uh, girl. Uh, in, in the story is different. So um, the, the, the kids in Mrs. D's classroom started to neutralize and understand the loaded words differently. For example, also when Mrs. D showed uh, the story of Bujang or uh, the, the boy from the, the uh, Suku Anak Dalam yeah, in, in Sumatra accompanied by his pet, a dog. Um, the word dog is also loaded because, because dog is kind of forbidden in Islamic law. And a lot of Muslim people consider uh, dog as, um, uh, uh, you shouldn't treat the dog as a pet. And when, when, when it's mentioned, the word dog is mentioned, it's, it's loaded with um, the word that is a uh, kind of, uh, apa ya, makian ya. Uh, or, or bad word, um, so so it's not something that you should mention. Mm -hmm. But so 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 the kids feel awkward when they heard uh, uh, Mrs. D said it. Like, what you said, dog, like that. But but um, in the process, uh, Mrs. D started to neutralize uh, the loaded words, um, uh, dog, and 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 the kids start to uh, understand and use the word like casually. And also unpacking the gender related issue, like uh, whether uh, girls can have jobs and get salary and that a hero can be a female. And then menstruation, the issue is of menstruation is important because 
this is an issue that is <coughs> commonly talked only by girls. But it's important that boys also understand and and can develop empathy toward their um, female uh, uh, friends who who have this menstruation. It, it's important issue in uh, uh, upper class in in elementary school, and in uh, Mr. D uh, school in Malinau, North Kalimantan. Uh, there are a lot of students who are who are not able to comprehend the text well. This is an issue faced by Mr. D. Yeah? But uh, one thing that Mr. D noticed in his classroom is that, can we see the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, one progress that we see in Mr. D's class is that uh, picking up and starting to read independently or voluntarily is a new habit um, conduct, um, done by uh, kids in his class and it's a good thing because because uh, we know that, that the reading stamina influence how students can apply the reading strategies independently and it improves their reading comprehension too and for example when Mr. D uh, read this book aloud to, to students um, the story of uh, a boy from Suku, Suku, Suku Bajau yeah uh, who also uh, uh, goes to school, uh, the students in his classroom also relate with that because the issue of continuing education is prevailing in his classroom. A lot of students in his classroom, um, they also go to the farm with the parents and many of them do not continue uh, formal schooling as they graduated from elementary school. And this is a serious problem face um, by the, uh, the local government there. So this is a book that um, uh, gives a good influence and um, help students to reflect on their own um, situation. And also another issue faced in Mr. D's classroom is the issue of um, the ethnic groups, um, um, Latin or hidden conflict because because it's dominated by a certain Dayak group from a certain uh, sub ethnic group, uh, Dayak Lundaya, yeah, um, in in his classroom and in in, in the city itself. So um, uh, so far they are uh, resistant in interacting. For example, when Pak D. Uh, uh, trying to group the students into some study groups, some see with the friends from different sub-ethnic culture. This is something that is um, hidden in Indonesia. We 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 are understanding uh, the word uh, Bineka Tunggal Ika or unity and diversity is still in slogan, yeah. But in reality, there are a lot of things that make us uh, resistant uh, to be with uh, people from other uh, cultural groups. Okay, um, I think we are, yeah, um, we are, we are on our uh, last slide. Uh, our topic mm -hmm. from the three classes uh, confirm our understanding that a literacy learning process, if it's conducted by teachers in a good um, uh, uh, stages, in in a good way, it can help uh, students to uh, comprehend. Uh, the text, comprehend the reading, and also enable them to connect themselves with the text and the world. Um, so, so in 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 another word, it, it it helps them to think critically and reflectively of of, of the text. So um, this should be happen in all Indonesian classroom, and also the use of uh, correct uh, books, the culture. Also help them in mediating or in. Um, we are amazed with the findings that the comprehension test. Uh, this is something that uh, we are also focusing. the The result of the comprehension test in all of the classrooms showed a positive improvement, even in math uh, class. This is shown in Mrs. Uh, this uh, classroom, uh, we also believe that, and, and, and we also have known that 
uh, the literacy skills influenced in numeracy because um, a lot of uh, numeracy uh, problems is uh, delivered um, through um, extended um, uh, questions, yeah, so I'll tell you that, yeah. So um, the recent AKM shown that uh, numeracy result is very correlated with literacy uh, result. And it is shown in Mrs. D classroom that students also demonstrates improvement in numeracy or math um, um, score. And uh, this also happens in um, Mr. R in Surabaya a classroom. Um, students understand a deep, uh, more deeply and better in science class. For example, in the topic of water cycle uh, and also environment issue um, uh, lesson uh, in Ipasia um, subject, uh, the students showed uh, more vocabularies and more understanding of the scientific topic discussed there because through better with with time when readable. It turns out a uh, fiction a uh, book scientific uh, subject uh, through fictions, you can relate with the character in the book and that's more in, in a more detailed way in, in fiction books that they are uh, they, they develop interest and they start to find more information from other sources. This is something that uh, we can proudly say that this is the advantage of using fiction books in uh, and 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 um uh about subjects that are not uh, language based yeah uh, in impasse or PPK and or IPS there are a lot of advantages in using uh, fiction books and also of course the the, the increased uh, habit of reading shown in Mr D's class shown students also develop their interest in learning this is a very good start because um. Uh, we, we 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 all know that students' motivation is the start of their um, learning process and how they improve their skills, which also influence how they improve their um, their learning results. So um, this is still temporary. The findings are still temporary, but we learned so much from the findings that uh, we are also amazed of the progress that are. Uh, experienced by the students in, in the three classes. Um, Dr. Firman, Dr. Sari, Dr. Tati, uh, would you like to add to that? Uh, thank you. That's all from me. Okay. Actually, Dr. Sophie, you were breaking up uh, for a minute or so. So, but I think uh, we're just going to give the opportunity to our audience here who are present here, I'm sure the, our presentation, our sharing raises uh, plenty of questions and curiosity. So I'm going to open the floor. Uh, so we were, of course, we would appreciate uh, any comments, uh, things like that, that uh, would enhance or even something that we didn't think of because we've been uh, working with these teachers. Uh, Dr. Um, uh, Sari mentions before that we've been with them for like over a year. So this has been like uh, for us, like longitudinal study. It, we thought, even though the research has only started uh, more uh, quite recently, by, by July, we started the, the research. So with that, um, I'm going to see if there are people who are going to raise their hands so to ask some questions directly. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I'm going to uh, acknowledge some of the teachers here from uh, uh, Indonesia. <laughs> Uh, I noticed some of the uh, Pak Hasto Budi Santoso is a, a principal uh, in Tarakan, ya, Pak. 
and then some pictures here ibu adri ibu andri also one of the recipients of the micro credential from the ministry of education we also acknowledge uh, Ibu Ratna Nurraila from the Ministry of Education, also working closely with our teachers. Uh, Pariza, Pariza from Banjarmasin, also here. Uh, okay, uh, anyone wanna ask some question? Probably this is the thing, uh, because this uh, the thing that we raise in our research is also in coincidence with the, the new policy uh, in, uh, that the governments uh, implemented. That is, uh, the first is an AKM, and the second one is the focus uh, uh, emphasizing on uh, literacy and numeracy. And uh, for us, it was, and also there is a policy of you know um, training uh, more, more, more teachers, uh, in-service teachers, uh, so, uh, so uh, they are uh, the Ministry of Education uh, that will be involved in the programs. They are, they have programs that kind of um, uh, nurture uh, master teachers, and then these three teachers are among the master teachers they are actually nurturing. So we, I think, that will be the opportunity for us to do research with. Uh, the policy that is happening that's being implemented and also uh, being supported the policy that how we can sustain the policy of you know um, uh, prioritizing literacy and numeracy while at the same time the policy of literacy learning how teachers would teach uh, literacy in the classroom also being promoted so that's what we are doing right here and at the same time uh, it is uh, also the issue of multicultural education that uh, sometimes uh, we know that's important because of the slogan of, of uh, our uh, Indonesia slogan is the unity and diversity. But at the same time, we still couldn't find a right footing uh, as to how we can promote that. We understand there is a civic education subject, but uh, as one of the teacher participants mentioned in the interview, a lot of time they feel like they're preaching or lecturing instead of just uh, reflecting about being uh, uh, about being Indonesian or you know living coexisting with people of different cultures, different values, different faiths. So uh, they feel like the, ex the experience of using authentic uh, children's literature with multicultural values. Uh, allow them to have some more authentic, yeah, authentic conversation, and uh, according to them, it's more like uh, mengena, yeah? feel like they're getting into the emotion and feeling like it's more authentic. So again, this is uh, our. Dr. Tati, I think we have one uh, person raising hands. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's Padla Sania, uh, Padla, uh, one of the students at Triple IU. You wanna raise a uh, wanna raise a question? Yes, I'm sorry for turning off my camera. Um, thank you for the chance. Um, it inspired me a lot. These findings and this research findings really inspired me a lot as a teacher to like foster the multicultural awareness through the literacy. What I'm gonna ask is, I'm not sure if I missed this information, but uh, would you? Would you mind telling uh, me or informing me about the process of the selection of the schools itself? Yeah, hello. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the basis of choosing those three schools in your research? And do they schools, do the schools, I mean, have uh, like diverse or or multicultural uh, backgrounds for the students? Do they come from like, diverse group or ethnic groups or yeah religion and other backgrounds thank you thank you Padla is working on the thesis proposal so this is part of the the thing that's very important to <laughs> yeah so, uh, dr sari enlightened Padla about the, our uh, participant selection and the setting okay thank you uh, Padla and it's really important questions to know us uh, especially when we have this uh, purposive uh, selection yeah, of the participant. As I mentioned earlier, um, we, we have known these teachers for quite a while. So um, as a qualitative researchers, we have to be uh, comfortable with uh, who we are working with. So they will be open to us and uh, that we have a, 
uh, kind of relationship that allow us to engage uh, with the dialogue um, uh, between the focal participants and, and the researchers. So these teachers, uh, we, we are fortunate to know them uh, from our previous uh, programs. Uh, Dr. Tati already mentioned the micro-credential uh, literacy uh, in which um, uh, teachers from all over Indonesia were invited to join and to participate, uh, of course, after they were being selected. So actually we got to know them from there and uh, we are actually uh, very open to um, any one of the teachers from that program. Uh, but then uh, because we could not, uh, you know, in qualitative research, this is actually a mixed method research, but um, uh, the qualitative aspect uh, did not allow us to have uh, all the teachers from the cohort, which were uh, 25 teachers. So we decided to um, have some uh, criteria that suits our purpose. Um, the first one is we want to see a different region. So Indonesia is a very, you know, we are archipelago country with um, different um, or, or very uh, specific um, characteristics. So we wanted to have uh, the one uh, geographically different. So we have uh, uh, one in, in Java, uh, which is the East, East Java in Surabaya, and then uh, the one um, with the minority group of Daya. So that's in uh, Mr. D classroom. And then the one uh, also in uh, Kalimantan actually, but very distinctive group of um, Indo uh, Chinese, Indo uh, Chinese descent, yeah? or uh, uh, they are Muslim, but they are from uh, Chinese uh, descent. So keturunan begitu ya. So um, this, this, this is very interesting because uh, usually we associate Muslim with um, uh, not not uh, with uh, Chinese descent, but uh, we have some of these uh, uh, in this group uh, because uh, because of the logistic uh, consideration too. We could only accommodate three classrooms, so we were very careful in our consideration, and we also wanted teachers who who are familiar with the principle of a reading and writing workshop because. Um, in implementing books as the uh, as the important medium of dialogue, we need to be sure that the, the teachers are comfortable in using books. So they are already have this knowledge about what to do with uh, books, not the textbook provided by the school, but given the choice of using uh, trade books. Yeah, in, in, in literacy, we know the term trade books or buku yang memang dibuat, not for the purpose of teaching actually, but for just enjoyment for reading. But we wanted them to be able to use that trade book as part of the important learning uh, facility in the classroom. Um, if we chose uh, teachers from outside of this cohort, then it would not be possible for us to uh, have this, yeah? Uh, maybe the concept of reading writing workshop were not uh, very common yet for uh, Indonesian literacy classroom at the elementary level. So uh, those are some of our consideration in choosing the focal teachers. I hope that works, yeah. Um, okay, thank you, Dr. Sari. We also have two hands raised. Uh, first, I'm gonna give uh, a chance to Supriyono, one of our students as well. Go ahead, Supriyono. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tati, for the chance. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask about uh, the book uh, that is related to the gender issue, which is related to, I think uh, one of the respondents from uh, Islamic school, which has a book uh, where uh, it portrays like a girl uh, wearing um, a, a tomboy, uh, as you said earlier. Uh, this is actually met related with the research that I'm uh, gonna do with my thesis. Uh, so that's why I would like to uh, ask uh, some questions related to this. Okay, uh, uh, my question is uh, actually, uh, okay, when it comes to Islamic values, uh, 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 when it comes to Islamic values, um, I think uh, as, as you see, uh, Islamic perspective is not really into kind of like, um, they see it as something negative. And uh, I was thinking uh, in giving the kind of book that is so uh, gender sensitive, 
uh, how how uh, do the environment around this respondent? I'm sorry because this is anonymous. Uh, this respondent response, like, uh, do they feel like this is like uh, threatening them, or is there any controversy? Some people say yes, or some people say no, or uh, how is the, the challenges in in, in uh, giving uh, that kind of book to the children in 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 his or her class? And that's uh, the question that I have, uh, Ibu Tati. Thank you very much. Okay, Supriyono. Uh, I'm glad uh, you kind of related to what we are currently doing with the thesis proposal. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna answer that question. Uh, indeed, the, the topics raised or even the book selection was quite controversial for some of them. But also our concern at the beginning, uh, because we have done multiple uh, interviews and the first interviews, one of the things that we asked them whether or not you know, uh, their beliefs about multicultural awareness or intercultural awareness and then uh, most of them are very progressive uh, in a difference I think they have their own uh, issues that uh, need to be addressed in terms of living uh, uh, having to live with people of different uh, backgrounds uh, especially within their uh, within their their uh, in the school uh, in their schools so uh, one of the things that we were uh, asking them, uh, when you are talking, uh, they were talking freely about uh, some constraint and some of the restriction when they are trying to bring up the, some progressive uh, uh, issues or multicultural areas. They were like, uh, you were, were, you did, do you feel like intimidated when you are raising this issue? They feel like they have a very secure and very safe environment because in the classroom, they are making a decision what's going on in the classroom. So they are... I was yeah my I personally quite surprised because they have they have a sense of autonomy and agency when it comes to uh, have making a decision in the classroom that they are teaching including the topics and how they mediate some very uh, challenging topics yeah raised by when you are reading books children would come up with a, a range of responses from a very controversial or very lame one you can have many things because uh, when as Dr. Sari mentioned, through dialoging book, you are allowing many possibilities and giving them some voice, even negotiating the meaning. So, so it wasn't surprising when you have a, a reading workshop, for instance, or you're bringing a book that's already quite controversial, such as Rida Loro, or a book such as the Chap Gome, or a book such as uh, 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 topi Kartika. So yeah, uh, the thing is they were very quite comfortable. And then I did, I just learned from this research that our teachers actually having the sense of autonomy and very um, they didn't like their class to be they they believe that they have the autonomy in the classroom. What happened in the classroom is their responsibility. So they they didn't. Uh, they're coming from different uh, regions, yeah, from a public school, some private school, but they have uh, seen uh, that they have they have a sense of autonomy in bringing up some difficult issues. So if for us, it's give uh, it's give like oh, so many uh, we believe that many uh, uh, in the uh, Indonesian teachers uh, that they're also similar. They're having similar sense of agency when it comes to you know. Uh, what what should be taught in the classroom? What should be dialogue? What should be mediated in the classroom? So uh, this is a uh, room for us that uh, uh, the teachers should be empowered. Yeah, should be because they already have a sense of autonomy in the classroom. So they should be empowered with uh, teaching that is uh, multicultural. Yeah, that is uh, multicultural val uh, values being promoted in the classroom. Did they uh, did they answer your question, Supriyano? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. I also see Dian, uh, our one of our students as well. You wanna uh, ask a question, Dian? Yes, Ibu. Uh, thank you very much. So, is my voice clear? Yes, very. Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry, because the connection is a bit uh, up and down. So, I have two questions, Ibu. Um, very insightful uh, research. And then I have two things in mind. So the first one is I'm curious, uh, would things happen differently if the, um, let's say the participants of this research 
actually involve uh, the kindergarten students? That's my first question, because considering uh, when it comes to reading habit and literacy um, as a mother, this is my perspective. I think reading habit should be built like as early as possible, right? And then uh, kindergartners also uh, are quite familiar with the bedtime stories as the habit at home. So that's my first question. The second is actually related to the research uh, impact, which is, I think this research is very um, beneficial, I believe, but I'm wondering would the results of this uh, research would, uh, what is it, uh, put the response from home, the students' home, like let's say the parents' uh, involvements, inv involvements, because whatever uh, has been done at school, I think the students and these kids probably will share uh, the stories and their experiences with their parents, right? So I'm considering and curious about those two. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dian. Okay, anyone wants to take up the questions? Uh, Dr. Sari, Dr. Sofi, or Dr. Firman, perhaps. Go ahead, Dr. Firman. Would you like? Okay. So two questions from uh, Budian, yeah. Uh, very interesting questions, and I think you make uh, good connections uh, to this research. Uh, the first question is that did the research include uh, kindergartners? Uh, we did not. Uh, we we are aware that kindergartners are uh, closely related to the uh, to how to build uh, reading habits. Start from home and uh, and school. They should have this home and school connections with literacy. But uh, in the context of this research, we did not uh, consider or follow up the history or the trajectory of the students uh, started from their. Uh, kindergarten. So we only focus and we limit our study only focus on uh, the fifth and sixth grade. So it's it, at the time of uh, the school or the semesters uh, that is going on in the, in the school. And then the second question, uh, uh, did we consider home or observe parents or uh, interview parents uh, to connect or to confirm the data? <clears throat> uh, the answer is no, we did not. But we plan to do that, but because of the limitations of the time constraints and also the budget constraints, yeah? So we did not have the opportunity to uh, deeply follow up the parents. But we do uh, confirm the data uh, to the uh, uh, teachers yeah, to the teachers themselves. So the teachers who collect the demographic data of the students. So we know the backgrounds of the students. We know the uh, the social cultures differences and also what is going on at home uh, from the perspective of the teachers. So uh, that's just to you know triangulate the data to confirm whether the data is true or not or uh, correct or not. Uh, so that we have this internal validity from uh, from the teachers. So I think, I hope uh, that answers your questions. Did that answer your question, Dian? Yes, oh. thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Birman. Uh, any other question you wanna raise? Uh, we still have some time, Asep? Thank you, Ibu, for the opportunity, and thanks also for the presentation, Putati and team. So uh, I'm wondering about the, uh, so this research using the printed book, uh, Ibu, yeah. So how's the possibility of using the digital book? So what might be different if the research context using the digital book or maybe uh, nowadays what happens uh, with teachers using the digital books? Maybe you can give some uh, overview of that. Thank you, Mm, uh, yeah, just for a clarification, indeed, uh, probably we didn't, oh, oh, maybe you saw it in one of the pictures. Uh, thank you, Asef. Yeah, uh, in our research, we specifically uh, selected book uh, that being uh, requested by teachers, and then we ordered the book. Uh, all the books are available for free, yeah, in uh, Literacy Cloud, published by Litara Foundation. So, um, mostly by Litara Foundation. And then those books are available for free to you, for you to download, or or even to read it on your computer or any other devices. But then in this case, we have um, 
uh, we have we have them ordered, meaning that in each site we specifically order the book that been requested by the teacher. So we have in uh, more or less they have like five titles and then with the number of students. So the uh, yeah, it, our budget mostly goes to that uh, uh, spending that is to uh, send the books to each location so that each student. Uh, at least they have uh, uh, books, uh, individual book or book to share during the the book discussion or reading session. So that that will be the clarification about the question, perhaps with regard to whether or not the the, the impact or even the result will be different had it had it been in digital uh, uh, digital form. Is that the question, Asep? Or what was yeah, the I think so. I think yeah. so, Katia. I think you think so. Okay. Uh, who's gonna? Yes, yeah. Uh, I guess I get uh, the research that is uh, available here. But Dr. Sari seems very ready to answer that. <laughs> no, it's just it's just uh, maybe I just share uh, a bit of the instances in which I uh, came to one of the classroom. I was very fortunate to be visiting one of the teachers' classroom and see how. Uh, engaging with books uh, uh, occur in the classroom. So it's an interesting question. At the time when uh, everything is in digital form, we, we it, it's a very valid question to know what would happen if, if the books are not printed. So it's, it's in the in digital form. But what I saw in the classroom, um, our, our uh, children, um, students in the elementary school are still very, uh, engage with something that they can see, they can touch, uh, that they can, uh, you know, just flip through. I think um, uh, these students, uh, they've been in, in uh, online learning for so long, and uh, some of them did not even have books at home, so they they very used to digital format. But when it came to um, the classroom, at that time, the face-to-face -face, uh, 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 interaction already occurring in the school. So all students were very excited to come back to school. And when they found a small library in the corner of their classroom, they were very excited. And um, that's facilitated their engagement with books. And I can see that uh, were, it were it not in the printed form, it might be, I mean, they, they still could do that at home. But when they have it in the classroom, they really engage in just like pointing out uh, the pictures, talking with friends while they were um, looking at pictures and come up with uh, a, with a meaning. Yeah? So they constructed meaning together in a small group. So in, in, uh, in our classroom, the students were seated in, in the group of uh, four tables according to uh, his uh, consideration, yeah, I think based on the characteristic of the students as well as their reading ability. So the students would be uh, picking up books from the corner of the classroom and then talk with friends while uh, flipping the books and interacting in, in a very productive way. I think they construct meaning together while they're uh, reading uh, the books that they, can, that they could hold you know, it's, it's something that might be, um, uh, we, we forget that children still needed that kind of interaction. So with, um, yes, of course, it needs uh, funding for, for a classroom to have that. But I think with the budget that the school uh, can set aside to have this book in, in the physical format is still very um, important for students in the early uh, age, like in elementary school. So that just give another, um, you know, it's a, it's a, in the sense of having a talk uh, together, touch the books, pointing out, flipping the books together. It's already part of the important interaction that we might miss. Um, and digital books can be used at home because maybe it's more affordable now for them, but for the school, we should uh, provide both uh, access, I think. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just from the observation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sari. Uh, uh, and uh, another thing is the, why we uh, design the, the research that include uh, uh, physical books because uh, based on research is still as 
it, it is still superior that having physical books, according to uh, research that are available, is still digital literacy cannot beat, uh, digital books cannot beat uh, physical books uh, as a way to learn literacy. And then also having uh, uh, constructive meaning together in the classroom and having students individually or they can touch and they can flip through as Dr. Sari mentioned. So uh, it is still superior when it comes to the outcomes of the research uh, uh, development of students at, as of now. But again, we need to provide, rather than having a book at all, you should better have at least digital book. So that will be my advice. Uh, I see- Dr. Tati, just yes. to add to that, to that explanation, I think it's a good idea of research yeah, for everyone here who is interested to you know, follow up what our findings uh, already have. So just to you know evaluate or examine uh, the difference between the nature of digital books and also the physical books and look at the 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 what is it the outcome or the output skills in in literacy I think that would be a good research topic for everyone. Yeah, everyone, uh, any students perhaps. We have five more minutes, but the, uh, Pak Rizai seems like would like to have some question, yeah, I'm gonna give the last opportunity for you, Marisa. Okay. Thank you, Bu Tati, Dr. Tati, Dr. Firman, Dr. Sopi, and Dr. Sagi. Thanks for your... Uh, have, uh, the first, uh, I want to congratulation for your great presentations of this, uh, this webinar. And then I want to talk about In your research, uh, you all uh, write about to promote the positive uh, value of the to the class uh, to the literature to the classroom. It's uh, I think it is uh, successful for the three teachers. Uh, I think for the suggestion that uh, we as the teachers uh, want to uh, the template or how to teach. Maybe after this, uh, after this research, maybe, uh, maybe one of you or all uh, the others want to make another research or anything that uh, how that to promote the value of the in the literature. It is successful for the teachers. So the, all the teachers can uh, apply uh, how to teach it to the. Uh, literacy. Maybe the reading workshop. Maybe it is uh, very good to uh, implement in for our teachers in Indonesia. And then for the seconds, I want to talk about uh, if the teachers in uh, in your research they have successful in delivering the uh, positive value of the of one literature. Maybe about uh, disability and another. But uh, do you find any uh, findings in your research that uh, when one uh, when one activities in the classrooms that one or more students that uh, delivered uh, they uh, they think that uh, it is the delivered to negative ways. Uh, I think like this: uh, if you uh, if the teachers want to talk about diversity, uh, but uh, we want to we, we want to make it in positive ways. But one or three students or two students, uh, they think it is in negative ways. Maybe just uh, if we want to appreciate, but they just uh, yell or mm -hmm. for the other teachers uh, for other students. Yeah, maybe it is for Thank my question. You. Thank you. Question. I think your question will be favor will be perfectly answered by Ibu Sofi Dewayani because that's actually one of the things we would like to produce about uh, providing access uh, more accessible books for professional teachers so they can uh, probably uh, learn from this research and also been uh, practiced by teachers. Uh, please, Dr. Sofi. Yeah, thank you, Pak Riza, for the question. This is a very important question and um, very relatable for all of us. So one of the outputs of the research, Pariza, is um, uh, writing or findings in the format of books, yeah, also written by teachers in the format of reflective um, essay writing. 
uh, which we hope would be more uh, practical for teacher readers. Yeah. yeah. So not only in the format of a uh, uh, research uh, article uh, publishable in an international journal, but also books that um can book that contains um. Uh, successful practice uh, done by uh, teachers in in a way that is enjoyable to read. Yeah, that, that's that's our hope. So um, uh, I think it's also in line with uh, what have been and what are uh, being produced by Kendibut Ristek, uh, GTK, uh, 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 Dikdas, yeah, uh, in. Um, writing of modules and and panduan for teachers to also uh, practice the reading workshop approach and also other liter literacy method approach uh, uh, so that teachers can uh, learn like practical ways to mediate a student's literacy learning. And for your second questions, Ariza, this is also faced by the three teacher participants. Uh, of course, in the early stage, um, they have to deal with uh, students' uh, negative responses toward uh, issues that they're trying to discuss in the classroom, yeah? Mm. What we've shown is the, the findings in the later phase, yeah? But of course, before that, uh, they have to deal with difficult questions, as you say. Um, as, as, as teachers, of course, um, this is what I learned also from them is that they they uh, they they do not counter or um, react to the students negatively. For example, like saying that it's oh no you cannot say that that that's a wrong way to think like that. But uh, they ask back to the students like what makes you think that way? Because students may come from different background and it's a way of thinking process too, right? That teachers have to negotiate or mediate. Um, uh, wh wh why do you think? Uh, wh wh what is your reason? Uh, that that's that's what I learned from them. So ask them to think more, like um, and also um, confront uh, their thinking uh, by uh, asking other students. I think that's what that's what they're doing in in mediating the the discussion process. You're not. You're not you not you're not you're not judging um, their judgment because judgment is not is, it cannot be terminated by another judgment. Yeah, but uh, the teachers try to promote like um, open-minded um, uh, way of thinking. A thinking process, critical thinking process, is by uh, uh, posing more questions. I think that's. Uh, you know the teachers, but Parisa, you can ask them directly, yeah, because I'm not the, the, the expert in this. It has to be answered by the teachers, actually, so uh, we can uh, converse more about this. Yes, Ibu Tati. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Sophie. I think by now the time, uh, actually the time allocated is already ended, but if you have some burning question, this is the opportunity for us for all, us together. <laughs> so uh, any other question before uh, maybe uh, the dean? Yeah, I think that's, that's all. That. I think nobody raised uh, the play yeah. hand, so maybe we can close it with Tati. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone who's from all over Indonesia. Uh, Professor Nina actually here. There are many teachers. Uh, they're very hungry for learning, very new information. So we are glad that they are here. They can learn from their colleagues and from their peers. So everyone, uh, thank you so much for spending your morning. Maybe you are some of, some of, some of you are skipping your meeting or classes, but uh, hopefully it's worth it. Uh, this is for the lunch talk uh, number nine. Hopefully we can see you again, again in the future for the lunch talk number 10. And then, um, yeah, I'll, we are looking forward to sharing for the final uh, result uh, sometime in December. Thank you so much. With that, uh, I'm going to conclude the class by uh, have, hope you have a good uh, day. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, everyone. Nadia, we can have photo together if you want to open the video, please. Oh, Ibu Umi Kulsum, welcome. You might be the next speaker, yeah, for the lunch talk. Thank you for coming. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs>
Oke, okay. ya, yeah. let's read the room. Have you get the foto Nadia eh, or Afra? Oke. Okay. Yes, Prof. Oke, okay, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. Oke, okay. thank, thank you for the opportunity. Bye, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.